Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. As always, I am so, so excited to have you guys here. And if you're new here, hello, welcome. My name's Claire, I'm a naturopathic doctor and I'm super passionate about helping you guys feel more empowered and educated when it comes to your health. And my goal for these What I Eat in a Week videos are yes, to give you guys some meal ideas and inspiration, but really to show you guys how I consistently make healthy and balanced meals on a regular basis and to show you how you can incorporate more whole foods into your diet. I don't tend to show recipes, one, because I really don't cook with recipes, but also because these meals aren't meant to be copied. It's more so to give you guys a template, an idea of how to make consistently healthy meals. When I approach my diet, I'm just trying to get as many whole foods as possible and doing my best to make sure that every meal has fiber, color, protein, healthy fats. I also try and get as many prebiotics and probiotics as I can. And I thought this week we'd chat a little bit about blood sugar regulation. This is something that comes up quite a bit because in my clinical practice, I do see a lot of metabolic health, whether that be prediabetes, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, weight loss resistance, fatty liver, all of those fall under the metabolic category. And of course, there are things like fiber, resistant starches, protein, and fats that we can focus on to help slow digestion and help blunt that glucose increase that we see after meals. But it's also really important to remember that blood sugar is controlled by different hormones like insulin, glucagon, and cortisol, and promoting healthy function of these hormones is going to be incredibly important for blood sugar control. The one that I talk about most with patients is insulin because insulin allows glucose to get into the cells, and when we slowly lose our sensitivity to insulin, it's known as insulin resistance. And there are a lot of things that can impact insulin sensitivity and signaling, but eating an anti-inflammatory diet is actually a really good way to help support insulin signaling. So for breakfast, I just had a few soft boiled eggs. I had some leftover purple sweet potato. You guys know I love leftover sweet potato because it's a resistant starch. I love the purple sweet potato because it's super high in polyphenols and I'll usually have that with some avocado. And then after breakfast, I made a little coffee. I'll usually have a coffee right after breakfast. I usually add some unsweetened soy milk and I'll usually put a little bit of sugar in the coffee as well. circadian neuroendocrine immune interaction. Enhanced glucocorticoid sensitivity. Inflammation is changing the receptor sensitivity. And this article just recently came out, but inflammation induced um, histamine impairs the acetylopram's function in the hippocampus. Inflammatory markers are highly involved in treatment resistant depression, moderate to severe depression and anxiety and PCOS, blood sugar, inflammation, androgens. One of the causes of insulin resistance is something we call metabolic endotoxemia. The gut microbiome is directly, directly involved with what's going on with mental health. Just because our patients aren't getting educated on this doesn't mean that this is not widely accepted in all forms of medicine. Better inter-referrals and the better relationships are with other practitioners. If you're insulin resistant, your risk of developing major depressive disorder is double that of someone who is not insulin resistant. And something that I've been doing more and more is having some apple cider vinegar mixed in water before my meals. Apple cider vinegar is great because it has acetic acid in it and that can help to slow the release of glucose into the bloodstream and can help with insulin sensitivity and glucose control. So that is something that I've been doing. And then you guys have seen me make a variation of this salad probably in my last five videos. So I'll always start with a base of greens and then I'll add some sort of carbohydrate. Today I did purple sweet potatoes. I'll add a protein here. Here I did some tofu. I'll usually add some avocado. I'll add some sauerkraut if I have it for some prebiotics, sorry, not prebiotics, probiotics. I also added some walnuts, some parsley, extra virgin olive oil, balsamic vinegar. I usually will add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. And this is just such a great meal. Not only does it have a good balance of fiber rich carbohydrates, protein, healthy fat, it's got tons of polyphenols. Polyphenols are the compounds that contribute to the color in a lot of fruits, vegetables, herbs, and spices. And they've been shown to help modulate the gut microbiome. They've been shown to help improve 
insulin signaling. So they're a really, really great thing to include in the diet. And that is why color is something that I'm always looking for when it comes to my food. And this is another thing. I think that it's really important to zoom out when it comes to our diet, to not focus too much on specific foods, but rather creating a very healthy and balanced diet that is very micronutrient rich. We see healthy insulin signaling. We see healthy blood sugar control in healthy individuals. When the liver is working properly, when the inflammation is well controlled, when the gut microbiome is healthy, that is when we have good blood sugar control and good insulin signaling. Now, speaking of the gut microbiome, I am just making up a big batch of sweet potatoes on Monday or Sundays. I'll usually make up a big batch of sweet potatoes because they are one of my favorite foods. They are just absolutely delicious. But also when you cook and cool any starch like a sweet potato, it becomes a resistant starch and then it can feed the good gut bacteria in your gut microbiome. And I often get asked if you reheat the sweet potato later, does it lose the resistant starch? And it doesn't. So even if you reheat a sweet potato or rice or anything like that, it's still going to have that resistant starch as long as you let it cool down before. So I made up the sweet potato a little bit earlier, let it cool, and then I reheated it for dinner. And I just had that with some chicken. I had some broccoli as well. I didn't film myself making the broccoli, but I will link my last video because that shows you guys how I make my broccoli. I serve that up with my sweet potato and chicken. This is a very typical meal for me, just having a vegetable, carbohydrate, protein, and then I'll top it off with some sort of healthy fat. Of course, I did some tahini and then I had a little piece of dark chocolate for dessert. And on Tuesday, I leave pretty early to go into work, so I always bring the same breakfast. I just bring some hard-boiled eggs, some sweet potatoes, sometimes I'll add some avocado, and I'll usually take my coffee with me to go. I know this is kind of boring that I have the same breakfast every day, but honestly, it just keeps my stress so much lower, cuts down on decision fatigue just to know that I have really simple meals. And stress does really play a large role in blood sugar control. We know that stress can impact blood sugar levels through cortisol and adrenaline release. So I always try and take a very low stress approach to my meals. And stress is also just something that is really important to address if you are looking to improve your metabolic health and blood sugar control. And you guys know if you see my other videos that I'm not a huge fan of just saying lower your stress or reduce your stress. I don't think that that works. Instead, focusing on healthy coping mechanisms, mindset work, stress reduction techniques, nervous system control. Those are all really great ways that we can help to support a healthy stress response. Another way that I really like to support my stress response is through different herbs. I decided to make myself a tea while I was at work. I love adding different nervines, adaptogens, just lots of antioxidant rich herbs into my teas. I also like to choose ones that I enjoy the taste of because I think that that's really important as well. And with medicinal herbs, it's really important to let them steep for at least 10 to 15 minutes. What I'll usually do is just make up a big liter of loose leaf tea, let it cool down completely, and then drink it like water throughout the day. For lunch, I'm just making another big salad here for my protein. I'm using some leftover chicken from the night before. I use some sweet potato, sauerkraut, walnuts, just the usual in my salad. And for me, just having these really staples, again, it keeps my stress really low. I don't think that healthy food should be ever something that you should be stressed out about. I really don't think that your health should be something that you're stressed out about. Instead, it should be something that we should be excited to do. We should be excited to eat healthy food. We should be excited to take care of our health. And of course, there are going to be times times where food is out of our control or we may have to eat something that is not the most optimal for our health. But what matters is the day-to-day -day choices that you're making and that's what I really want to emphasize with this. I want you guys to have the tools and the knowledge to make really healthy, consistent choices on a day-to-day -day basis so that we're promoting that overall healthy metabolism, metabolic flexibility, all of those things are going to be important for long-term blood sugar control. Shall I compare to a summer day? She's the sun, she fill out the gray. Quench my thirst, she's my lemonade. The yellow that I couldn't paint. Shall I compare to a 
summer day Just like the sun, it will never fade The cool breeze in the shade My four leaves to the plate Right to my mistakes Okay, and then moving on to dinner, you guys have seen me make this. This is such a staple meal for me, but I'm making tofu rolls with a peanut sauce. I make my peanut sauce the same way. I'll use tamari, a little bit of rice vinegar, maple syrup, garlic powder, and then peanut butter. I don't think I showed the garlic powder here, but I definitely put it in. And then I'll usually thin it out with a little bit of water, and that is how I make my peanut sauce. And then you guys saw how I made my tofu before, but I'll just marinate it in some tamari, maple syrup, garlic powder, and then I'll roast it in the oven for about 20 to 25 five minutes let it cool off and then I'm ready to make my rice paper rolls I'll usually do shredded carrot tofu some avocado this avocado was actually pretty good other than the one little bruise part I also added some spring mix and alfalfa sprouts again just lots of vegetables vegetables are great because they are prebiotics they help to feed the good gut bacteria in the gut microbiome and when we feed the good gut bacteria they create things called short chain fatty acids like butyrate these have potent antioxidants effects but they can also impact metabolic health through insulin sensitivity and insulin signaling so it's really important to make sure that we're getting lots of fiber and a good variety of fiber as well Pieces in my room. Are you coming over? That's cool. I could use a little something to do. We could go outside, take a little ride if you want to. That's cool. I did what I was supposed to. There's nothing left for me to do. So now I'm walking out. And for lunch on Wednesday, I just made up another one of my big salads. I sometimes get asked if I reheat my sweet potatoes to put them in my salad. I don't, but you totally could. And like I said, it won't destroy the resistant starch. Another thing that I did want to mention is why I think that blood sugar control is so important, even if your concerns are not related to HbA1c, prediabetes, diabetes, or any sort of weight loss resistance. Honestly, blood sugar control plays such a large role in our health and even symptoms like acne, hair loss, irregular periods, anxiety, depression, insomnia, especially waking up in the middle of the night, thyroid dysfunction, tinnitus, all of those can be related to insulin resistance, blood sugar issues. So that is why I really prioritize eating this way. I just find my skin is better, my energy is better, my mood is better. All of those things are better. I just feel better. So that is really why I prioritize that. Now, moving on to dinner, I basically made a very similar dinner to what I did on Monday, but instead of roasted broccoli, I did roasted carrots. So I roasted mine with some avocado oil, salt, garlic powder, and parsley. I sometimes get asked about olive oil versus avocado oil, which one's better for cooking. Really, you can use olive oil up to a smoke point of about 400 degrees so you can definitely use it for cooking i'm just kind of in the habit right now of using avocado oil for cooking also i like to use avocado oil when i'm doing things on the stove top just because i can't really tell exactly how hot the pan is getting that is just what i will say about the avocado versus olive oil i still really like using olive oil for low temperature cooking or dressing salads or things like that because it is so so good for you and of course i just top my dinner off with some tahini. And 
And then on Thursday, I just had my classic breakfast. So purple sweet potatoes, avocado, and some soft boiled eggs, topped it with some salt and parsley. And then after my breakfast, I got some free samples of some supplements. I got some liposomal glutathione. So I had a little packet of that. Definitely not something that I take on a regular basis because glutathione is so expensive as a supplement. But I do take another supplement that helps to support healthy glutathione levels. And if you guys don't know, glutathione is a very potent antioxidant. It's used up quite a bit in the liver. And I talk about this sometimes, but the modern world just places quite a bit of stress on our liver. So I just had some of that. And then for lunch, I wanted something very quick. So I ended up just having leftovers of the night before. And then for dinner, I ended up making some spring rolls. Again, just a very low stress day of eating. Because like I said, there are so many other things that contribute to blood sugar regulation other than the food we eat. Things like physical activities, stress, sleep, environmental exposure. All of those can play a large role in not just our metabolic health, but overall health. And that is just a really great reminder to remember to zoom out. Remember that yes, food is a very important part of our health, but it's not the only part of our health and making sure that we're doing all of those things to live a very healthy and holistic lifestyle. Really, really important. So Fridays, I'm in the clinic the full day. All the other days, I'm either there just in the morning or the afternoon. So I always have to pack my lunch. I just packed a salad with some tofu, sprouts, greens, the leftover carrots, sweet potato. I also topped it off with some walnuts. I don't know if I showed that. And then I made a very quick dressing with some avocado oil, balsamic vinegar, parsley, garlic, and a little bit of salt. I also took a avocado just with me on the side so that I could mash it up and mix it into the salad. And then I also brought some soft boiled eggs and sweet potatoes for breakfast. And then for dinner, my boyfriend was over for the weekend, so we picked up some fresh pasta and just made a big pasta dish. I sauteed up some mushrooms. We also made up some chicken. And definitely on the weekend when I have more times, I definitely like to make fancier meals. This is one that we make quite often. So yeah, we just ended up having the pasta. We added some pesto, green peas, the mushrooms. We had that with some chicken. We also topped it off with some goat cheese as well. And I'll put a few other clips of some of the other meals that I had over the weekend. I always like to make a big veggie scramble with some sourdough toast that we get from a local bakery. Oh, I also had some chocolate covered almonds for dessert. And sometimes on the weekends, we'll go out for meals. I never really stress too much about food because I know that 90% of the time, 
time, I'm eating very nutrient dense meals with lots of color, lots of fiber, lots of high quality protein. So whenever I'm out, I can just enjoy the food and enjoy the company because I do think that that is a very important part of health as well. With that being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some meal ideas or inspiration. As always, I'm here to support you guys with your health journey, whatever that looks like for you. You guys can also check out the description if you're interested in more ways to connect with me and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!